like part two of the high revision using the 1997 paper, still in paper one, but going on to question five now. So pause and try question five. Number five, what's this? A. Find a real root of that equation. Well, all that a root means is a value put in for x that gives an answer when you work it out of zero. So you could just do some trial and error until you found a value that worked and then that would be the answer to part A. But you can see that later on you're going to want the other roots which implies a factorisation. So you may as well go in with the synthetic division of it then. So I've got no missing coefficients. So it would be 2, negative 3, 2, negative 8. Then it's just a case of trying some numbers. You know that if it's power 3, there should be 3, or could be 3, linear factors. x minus something, x minus something, when I suppose the last one would have to be 2x, because that's got to come to 2x. But the some things at the end, the 3 end numbers I've got to multiply to give an 8. There's still quite a lot of choice there. 1, 2, 4, 8, plus is negative, positives and negatives. But, um these are negatives here, so the chances are it's going to be a positive number. So why not just start at the simplest one, like 1? If it was a 1, 1, that would be a 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1, that's not going to make it. Try 2, 2, doubled, 4, add it, 1, doubled, 2, add it, 4, double, 8, comes to 0. So that worked. Right, now it's talking about roots, not um, factors. So I'm going to use that as the value of the function, because that serves two purposes. If it's considered as a division, then that's the remainder. But the value of that remainder is also the value of the function when x is the value 2. So I'll say this. At x equals 2, the value is 0 which means x equals 2 is a root. Although since it says find a real root, I'll put is a real root. Right, so that was part A. Now part B says show algebraically. Right, well I've done this part already, this division, so I could carry on and carry the factorization. So I know that if 2 is a root, x minus 2 is a factor, and that this polynomial here is the other factor. It's just degree 2, so it'll be, whoops, 2x squared plus x plus 4 equals 0. And the factorisation of that will give me the other roots, if it factorises, or if in fact it's got any other real roots at all. You can check that with the discriminant. So, how will I set that down? I mean, I'll just read it all out. The discriminant of 2x squared plus x plus 4 equals 0 equals... 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times 4. B squared minus 4AC. And that's going to be 1 minus the 32. So that's going to be negative 31. Well, that's negative. Which means not only will that not factorise, because it wasn't a perfect square. If the discriminant's a perfect square, it'll factorise, because you'll have rational roots. The formula will have whole numbers over whole numbers. If it was at least greater than zero, I could have used the formulas and there still would have been some nasty real roots. But there's no roots at all here, because that's a negative. That makes it easier. And that's what the question says. Show there's no other real roots. Well, since the discriminant is less than zero, that means there's going to be no further real roots. There's going to be no further real roots from this customer here, the only root being x equals 2. And that's question 5. So, question 6 now. Pause and try question 6. Question 6. Diagram shows a parabola and a straight line. A tangent to the parabola has to be drawn parallel to this line. Which means if you go parallel to that line, You'll be hitting it somewhere about here and that parallel line of course will have the same gradient because it's parallel and that will give you the value of the derivative at that point so the first part of this question is what's the gradient of that line what's its gradient because its gradient will be the same as the gradient of the tangent to the parabola well the expression the equation has been given in this form so i need to rearrange it into y equals mx plus c so i'll bring over the 5x 
bring over the 12, not that matter particularly, because straight away I can see that the gradient's going to be negative 5. So the gradient of the line is negative 5. That means the gradient of the tangent to the parabola at that point will be negative 5. That means its derivative will equal negative 5. So the next part will be get the derivative of 1. So we've got dy by dx will be 8x plus 3. And if m equals negative 5, that means the gradient will be given by the derivative, which should then also equal negative 5. So that means 8x plus 3 should equal negative 5 at this point. I want this x coordinate here. We'll just solve that equation. 8x equals negative 8, which means x equals divide by 8, negative 1. That's about it. To question seven, pause and try question seven. Question seven. If x is an acute angle such that tan x is four upon three, show the value of this equals the expression given here. Well, that's the case where you just construct a triangle. So for this angle x, it's tangent opposite over adjacent. It's tangent is four upon three. So work out the hypotenuse, but you recognise that instantly. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And to find the value of this expression, expand it. Remember, it doesn't just equal sine x plus sine 30. No brackets do that with functions acting on them. It's only when you multiply a bracket you get the two terms. If you do anything else, that's much more complicated. So this one goes to sine x cos 30 plus cos x sine 30 and you should know your 30s of course I'm being lazy here as we always do because strictly speaking there should be degree signs in these all over the place because without a degree sign that implies that these are actually measured in radians but they're not but no one ever does go through putting them all in yeah, it's understood here it's all degrees right now sines and cosines of 30 well you should know that if you don't remember it you can always remember the triangle the triangle that produced it the triangle that was half of an equilateral triangle with 60, 60, 60. With sides, instead of 1, 1, 1, sides 2, 2, 2, because I'm half in this one. 2, 1, Pythagoras root 3. Right, sine of x from this triangle, 4 fifths. Cos of 30, root 3 upon 2. Cos of x, 3 fifths. Sine of 30, 1 upon 2. They're both over 10. So just add the numerators. 4 root 3, whoops, plus 3. And that was it. That's all you had to show. That one done. Question 8. So pause and try question 8. Question 8. Given this equation, y equals 2x squared plus x, first part, differentiate it. It's only 3 marks. It's all been pretty easy so far, so differentiating it's going to be multiplied by the power, take one of the power, 4x plus 1. Second part, show that this thing, show that x times 1 plus dy by dx is in fact equal to 2y. Now, that's equal all the time, this is actually an identity, it doesn't matter what you put in for x and y, these two things will always be the same. So for this one, the technique usually is start with this side and rearrange it till it ends up looking like that side. But it's also possible to start with both sides and bring them down to look till they look like the same thing. So maybe we'll do it that way. So here what we've got, we've got x times 1 plus. Now divide by dx was just 4x plus 1. I'll take this as far as it goes and then see if I need to bring this in. Depends how complicated this bit gets. So that then equals x times 4x plus 2. So that gives me 4x squared plus 2x. And you can see that that's double that, that makes 2y. But how exactly are you going to show that? I'd have to take out the common factor of that. See here, I could then bring this side down, make that 2 times 2x squared plus x, and then it become 4x squared plus 2x. And then I can say left hand side equals right hand side. But I think I'll just keep on going down this way now I've started. Which equals, take out that 2, 2x squared plus x, 
and that was equal to y, so equals 2y, which is required to show, or required to show. So there it is. Question 9, pause and try question 9. Question 9 already. Nothing tricky so far. Show that this function can be written in the form, not like that, where a, b and c are constants, because it's a bit ambiguous. Do they then want you to, do I not say, stating the values of a, b and c then, there's no doubt. Oh, I said i just write in that form. Right, anyway. So basically you're just going to be completing the square. So, ignore that, not ignore that too. Take that too as a factor, whether it's a common factor or not, or not. It happens to be here. Leaving x squared plus 4x, and ignore that 3. Then, this part, you can square that, form that into a square, because if you've got a square, you only need two of the parts out of the five to complete it all. You know that the first times the first makes the first, the last times the last makes the last, and twice the product makes the middle. So twice the product makes the middle means this is half of it, so that's plus two. That meant that would have been a plus four, but there wasn't a plus four there. So I'll have to take away that four, that was that two squared, I'll just express it that way minus 3. So I've got 2 times x plus 2 squared minus 4, that's minus 8, and the minus 3 means 2 times x plus 2 squared minus 11. But now how do we answer it? Because it says show it can be written in the form. Now you could just do that and leave and say well that is the form, but I tend to in these cases think oh, I'll just do this, say okay it's in the form if this would just work, if it's in the form of that a x plus b squared plus c, and just for safety's sake I'll say where a is the 2, b is the 2, and c is the negative 11. So I don't know which part to underline, so I'll just underline them both. Now part b, because that was part a, which I should have said. Hence or otherwise. Otherwise meaning you could go ahead and find the turning point by differentiating if you want. Hence means use what you've so f you've derived so far and it's only one mark. That's because when you've got a quadratic, it's got a parabola. And you know for that parabola when it's in this completed form that you're going to get the minimum or the maximum from this part here. So I could say straight away, you could state it straight away, negative two, negative eleven. Or you could say, well, a square can never be less than zero, so the lowest this can ever get is negative 11. So I could say the minimum value is negative 11, and that's going to happen when that part's zero. That's going to happen when x plus 2 is zero, when x equals negative 2. And then I can state it. Where's the turning point? Well, it's got a minimum turning point, negative 2, negative 11. And the last one in this video, pause and try question 10. Number 10. Evaluate an integral. Right, well, the first step would be, I'll put it over here, index form. If you're going to carry out a differentiation or integration, put expression into index form. So that's going to be x to the power of half dx. So that's just going to go back up to add 1 to the power, 3 upon 2, divide by that power, but rather than putting over 3 upon 2, which makes it look very clumsy having fractions in part as part of fractions, instead of dividing by 3 upon 2, multiply by the reciprocal. So do 2 thirds of it from 1 to 4. Another thing, 2 thirds is going to appear in both calculations. So take it out as a common factor. So it's going to be 2 thirds of work it out at 4 minus work it out at 1. So 2 thirds of working out at 4 to the power of 3 upon 2, working out at 1 to the power of 3 upon 2. So it's 2 thirds of, now 3 upon 2, power on top, root below, square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 1 to the power of anything is 1. So that comes to 7, 7 twos are 14, final answer, 14 upon 3.